my wonderful people welcome to god's loves you channel in this channel we'll present to you news on daily basis as it is happening i am bringing it to you live and direct information across the globe especially in nigeria if you like what i do in this platform please after watching subscribe put on your notification bell and that way you'll be able to know when i upload a new video I present the news first, then I sit down there together to watch it with you. And later on, we'll go to the comment section. Each and every one of us will say our opinion about the video that we we'll watch. I appreciate your massive support. I thank you for your continuous presence in this channel. May God Almighty bless you all as we watch this video together. Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. A lot has happened since uh, the last time we spoke mm -hmm. in February. Um, then we saw Sunday Boho coming out to take a stand to defend his people from what he called uh, attacks from um, headsmen, uh, the killing of uh, farmers, raping of women and um, invading of uh, the people's farmlands. He came out to take a stand to defend his people. But what we have today is uh, a situation where the DSS have uh, claimed responsibility for raiding his home, uh, taking responsibility for killing two people who they say attacked them and declared Sunday Boho wanted. How do you react to this? Well, I react to what has happened on so many levels, including even reportage. Uh, for instance, going through the papers, one prominent and respected papers. Uh, there was a sentence which said, for instance, uh, the government had moved against uh, secessionists and other criminals. Now, that's a very loaded and wrongful expression. Would-be secessionists, secessionists and other criminals. How can you place the will or the wish for separation as a criminal act. Um, that kind of language does not exist in the Constitution, doesn't exist in law. Uh, it should not exist in the, um, the catalog of moralities because it's not an immoral uh, act or position to say that you want to stop belonging to an entity or even what you want to join another entity because people take a very simplistic approach to so-called secession. Sometimes it just means I want to leave this group and join another group. And we've had examples like that before and after independence. The Ghana, uh, Guinea uh, Union, for instance. And we've had uh, uh, also, even after independence, the uh, separation by fiat of Bakasi awarded to another nation. I mean, it was not just goats and cattle which existed there, it was human beings. They were not asked where they wanted to belong, but with a stroke of the pen, for certain political reasons, consolidated by succeeding government, the Bakasi people were ceded to the Cameroon. And we're, before that, of course, we had the plebiscite in the Cameroon uh, uh, region in which some, uh, a group, the section, decided to go with Cameroon, another section to stay with Nigeria. So why on earth, why on earth in the name of justice should anyone classify those who wish to secede or rejoin another nation as criminals? That's wrong and that is playing the devil's game, it's playing the government claim. Why do I um, a position? Look at the raid, this very bizarre raid, midnight raid on a law-abiding uh, citizen, which the government now says uh, netted a number of illegal weapons, AK-47s, etc. ammunition, ammunition. We're now in a situation where, of course, Ibuho is saying that these weapons were not there, they were, they were planted. Now that's one aspect. We can deal with that later on. But more important for me is the position of the government saying that the existence of uh, these weapons 
quote-unquote existence in uh, Igbo's place, proved that he was planning war against the state. Now, that position, that statement, a uh, very loaded uh, statement, was simply to conflict, deliberately to conflict issues. It was to obscure the fact that Igboho and other people, myself included, have been decrying the depredations on the lives of law-abiding citizens, farmers especially, throughout the whole nation, Benue, Kaduna, Nasarawa, etc., etc., and saying that it's time, and not just civilians, Danjuma, Twanstead, called on the people and said, don't trust the military anymore. Defend yourselves, whichever way you can. And other governors, I mean, some, other, some governors, other voices, like governors, have made exactly the same statement. Now, Igboho, even if he had those weapons, he's claiming that his mission was to liberate his people from the tyranny of squatters who now become violent overlords. And he has a good cause in that sense. Testimonies of uh, citizens, farmers especially, who have been brutalized, dehumanized by these squatters who have acknowledged and identified themselves as Fulani, you know, that this decades and decades of this kind of anomalous, anomalous situation in which the people did not receive the necessary mandatory and entitled defense and protection by the security forces, in which sometimes it is the victims who have been jailed, put in prison. There is a recent case in Ibarakba, for instance, who read the personal testimonies of those who were arrested and detained by the police simply for going to challenge those who were tyrannizing over the existence and raping their women. So now, you have a situation where a government is saying, oh yes, the existence of these weapons means that Iboho was planning armed insurrection against the state. So the whole thing from beginning to the end just stinks. The raid, the motivation has become very absolutely implausibly, you know, uh, uh, just uh, degraded. And uh, uh, right now we're in the kind of situation which we have warned against. We called on the government to accept its responsibilities. And when eventually now citizens say, enough, we're going to protect ourselves, you say they are arming against the state. A language which we never used to describe it or to, uh, to accuse those who have been proven to be the aggressors in this case. So, where, where are we, you tell me? After raiding his home, the DSS had come out to say that a Sunday Ibo is wanted and that he should turn himself in. Uh, what would you advise he does in this situation? Well, um, my advice uh, is not even so much Igbo, but to the government, that they should stop pursuing this person as a criminal. Uh, because you have begun by acting in a criminal fashion against him. Because if and when Igbo comes to trial, I guarantee you it's the government which will be very, very embarrassed. Very embarrassed. So it's not even in the interest of the government. I think they should just tell Igbo, we made a mistake. We should not have acted in this way. You are no longer wanted. Please go back to your home. In fact, escort him to his home, you know, quietly, and let him resume his normal uh, life. To declare him wanted. And again, the, again, this is another issue of language. I read in some papers, Igboho is in hiding. Well, but more accurately, he's probably just gone underground, you know, to protect he, himself and perhaps to be able to continue his declared struggle. I'm not talking now about his, the secessionist aspect of his struggle. No, no, I'm talking about what Igboho came out to do and which. I believe is still his mission 
in this nation to protect, defend his own people and to let the aggressors know that they are not lords of this nation or any section of it apart from what they are constitutionally entitled uh, to. So I think the government, it's in known interest, if you bring Ibo to trial, you, you, you're going to get mud in your face, clearly. As far as I'm concerned, it's up to Ibo to decide. He knows what the circumstances were. He knows what happened before his people were killed. And he's the only one who can judge, who can decide for himself. I cannot advise him. Yes, yes. the last time we spoke, Professor, you talked about the methods of Sunday Ibo and how that there were concerns around his methods and that there were talks going on and uh, uh, a lot of things going on, you know, that we couldn't see to make sure that in as much as he was standing for the right thing, that his methods would align with what was, what is also right. So um, where are we on mm. that? Well, when you talk about methods, for instance, I want to distinguish. There, there are two uh, very heavy issues on our hands at the moment, uh, even though both allegedly bear the name secession. What um, Igbo uh, stands for is not too dissimilar to what um, uh, Kano, Kano, for instance, stands for. Uh, the methods in terms of what we know, what is self-declared by these individuals, the method of uh, Kano, for instance, is very different from the method which we are able to ascribe to Igbo up to now. Not what the government is alleging, but up to now, Igbo has joined others, for instance, in holding rallies all over the country. There has been no accusation of any violence, none whatsoever. Guns have not been fired, uh, houses have not been burnt. Okay, when he, after he went and told this, um, this uh, herdsman who was accused of things, told him, leave town. There's no evidence that he was responsible for the violence that followed. You know, the claim that some houses were burned afterwards. Well, it was proven that all this took place after he left. Nothing has been able to touch to him in terms of violence. So we, we have that uh, uh, approach to what, what you might even call a, a meeting of minds. And we have to separate all those things, just as we must separate the principle of separation from whether we actually want it. Let me, let me make this quite clear because very often this is conflated and it makes discourse very, very difficult. It's first of all the issue of the right of a people to secede or not secede, to amalgamate or not amalgamate. That's one thing. And for me, that is incontrovertible. People are born free as individuals and as groups, as community. They have historic uh, the, uh, aspects of history which make them recognizable as one entity or not. And whether they have a right to move out or move in, that for me is a fundamental principle of human existence and even social uh, evolution. You see, one begins to understand, for instance, why, <laughs> very strangely, some people got up and stopped and stopped the teaching of history in this country. It's, we, we, recognize, we know for certain now, and it's become evident, that is because they don't want people to have a historic reference, even within their own society. In other words, if they studied history, they know that they don't even have to go back to back centuries, they don't even have to go outside so to Michael, Asia. So this to video together with me, like I said before, if you like this channel, if you like what you just watched, if you like what is happening here, please do not hesitate to subscribe. Put on your notification bell. Keep on watching God's Lost You channel because you are going to be getting information on daily basis about what is happening in the world and in Nigeria and in Biafra land. Thank you so much. I appreciate your massive support in this channel. May God Almighty continue to bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye until we meet again.